Hey guys, how's it going? It is I, The Real Randy Chavez. I'm coming at you with a random third video of the day because that's what I do now. This video is going to be why you shouldn't listen to your parents or any hater for that matter. Now, your parents could be haters and it's kind of a case-by-case -case basis, but I feel like a lot of parents really try to give their kid advice on what to do with their life and it's not for the kid's happiness. It is for uh, parents' bragging rights. Like it's like, my kid is doing this. My kid, a lot of immigrants' parents, Asian parents are so, so guilty. There's actually a subreddit on Reddit called like Asian parent stories because they're all the fucking same. I mean, like they look the same. I mean, like they all are just like, nope, school, you're doing this, doing that. And they're so hardcore with it. And there's a reason why colleges in america if let's say like a white person has like a 98 average and an asian person has a 98 average they will take the white person not because colleges are like racist like no we need to take care of white people first no it's because so many asians get so many of the top positions because they're always absolutely hilariously destroying everyone else in academics so they hold Asians to a higher standard. And it's like, all right, if you guys are getting the same or taking the white person, because Asians are just absolutely overwhelming everyone with their incredible scores. And just getting back to this, from my generation that grew up, you know, 10, 15 years ago, and every single, you know, 20 years ago, whatever it was, every single person I talked to, every single show on TV from like 7th Heaven to like Step by Step to fucking... Whatever it was, they were saying, like, go to school. Something that's something you could always fall back on. And it's like, okay, I guess, depending on what you go for, obviously you need to be, like, doctor, lawyer, whatever. Um, something that requires a degree, anything in the medical field. Yes, although there's some... I don't know if you could do it anymore, but in the veterinary system, a lot of the techs I knew that did not have licenses performed better than the ones that did just because of experience, not because like they were more educated about things, although through the experience they would be to a certain extent. Uh, it's just that the ones that had licenses would get there eventually. They just, you know, a lot of them were younger. And, you know, uh, I think nowadays in, in most states, it actually is required to practice as a veterinary technician to have a license. But anyway, what I'm saying with this is that a lot of parents will make try to make decisions for the kids predicated not on their happiness but just on how it makes them look and that is the absolutely wrong way to go about it that is horrible horrible advice like i wouldn't like what does your kid want to do like what do they and i get it when kids and you don't know what you want to do i didn't know what i wanted to do even even when i went in the military i was like you know what i am tired of working three jobs and working like 90 hours a week i want one job oh the military it's kind of like <laughs> you're working a lot especially on deployments but it's something where uh, okay and people go in the military for different reasons like some people like my drill my uh military training instructor in basic training is like and he was in for like 20 something years he's like i don't want to get out of the house i was like really like <laughs> yeah that's people do that but um again getting back to that point i'm sorry i keep getting sidetracked is that you don't have to know what you want to do like, even after I got out of the military, my plan was like, okay, I have experience in taking x-rays. I did that as a veterinarian assistant, you know, for nine years before I joined the military. And if I could transition over the human side and my patients won't try to uh, bite me, I was like, okay, that, I, <laughs> that could work. Uh, they could, I could te physically tell them, hey, you know, lay in this position, stand in this position, this way, whatever. And the reason for it, whereas a dog or a cat is just like, they're not having it. You have to do it in awkward ways, and it's it's awkward and a lot of times a little bit dangerous. And then as soon as I complete one semester of college, one, I hated it. As soon as I complete one semester of college, and then I get a job at a bank, and I realize, wow, I can make a lot of money with this. And what was I going to school for? Just to be comfortable? Like, to get a job as an x-ray tech? Eventually, uh, you know, after, you know, say two years after I graduate make like 40, 50 grand a year, be absolutely miserable, or could I work my fucking face off, make a business out of it, and then make another business out of it? Uh, yeah, I could make a lot of fucking money. And again, I don't, I don't do it for the money so that I can, you know, buy frivolous things, although once in a while I do. A lot of it is just 
to help people, to help the world. And what I've been seeing with people is that they go to college and even if they get a job in the field they graduated in, a lot of times it's a lot of debt. And, you know, they when you start off and you're making not a lot of money, eventually you will. But I see so many kids rattle with so much debt and they're miserable in the job that they're working in and they just didn't go about it the right way. And a lot of parents would say, like, you know, they do it to please their parents and then they wind up resenting their parents for it. I am not like that. I absolutely did just what I thought was right. And that thesis changed because I found something better. There's no shame or harm in being able to say like, hey, this was the path that I was on. And then I found something better. And I'm just doing that. And don't do anything just to please your parents. Because that is a surefire way of re of letting you resent them later. Because now you're doing something that you don't want to do. And it is a lot easier to switch careers and be malleable in your 20s than it is in your 40s when you know you have a family or 30s when you have a family it's easier to do change when you're younger and it's just not the right way to go about it do what makes you happy again i just kind of fell into this and as making me happy yeah yeah i'm, I'm pretty happy i can do relatively what i want and it, this is not me like saying to you you know, just, just do what you want and be a free hippie and, you know, day drink or whatever, or do that too once in a while. And it's not like I'm saying that when I have no money to my name. No, I became a hundred thousand there twice in my twenties, really just in the past few years. Cause I, when I got out of the military, I didn't have much. And then anyone that's been in the military that gets out, it's like, Oh my God, this is a huge adjustment. So this is me coming at you as someone that has had a lot of help. My first business, a lot of it was already established, but Someone else had a lot of good training and a lot of training wheels. I had a lot of help. I, I could not have done that on my own. I don't think, but it worked. And then the second business that I'm doing again, all on my own. I've by the end of December of this year, 2020, I will have spent a hundred thousand dollars in Pokemon cards. That's spending me taking the money that I have and spent it on there. You can't do that if you're not successful. And I see, and again, it's Pokemon cards, but I see a lot of people with debt that, uh, let's say pandemic, they don't have a job, or even if they are, they're not getting paid that much. I guarantee you, if you have forty, fifty thousand dollars in debt, whatever it is, and you're making, let's say, forty thousand a dollar, forty thousand dollars a year, if you go to garage sales, you go on Craigslist, if you go to your nearest flea market or thrift store or clearance rack, and you buy stuff for a couple of dollars, take pictures of it post it on eBay, somebody buys it, you know, for like four times, whatever, and then you go and ship it out, you'll make 80000 a year. Like, what the fuck do you think that I do? Like, that's what I do. I go out to people, I say, okay, the Pokemon cards are worth, let's say, you know, $1,000, and you don't, and that, that person does not want to waste time, okay, eBay, eBay, and they don't know what the fuck they're doing, because they'll list it for whatever, and it might not sell, or it'll take six years to sell, or they underbid it, and you could have gotten like four times for this. I'll also tell them, right? Okay, this is what it's worth. I'll give you half. One, because of time and labor and because I give you cash right there up front. You don't have to worry about eBay fees. And I go and I flip it. Some things I keep for my collection because I fucking love it. It's artwork. It's great. But that is something that people don't want to do because it's not sexy. Because it's not, you know, it's dorky and it's geeky and it's like weird. I'm making fucking money. I don't know about you. I'm making fucking money. I... Will be a millionaire probably by the time I'm 38. Yeah, I'm still in my 20s, but uh, and, and that's if both of these business kind of just keep going the way they're going, not if they don't grow exponentially like I expect them to. And that's also not including my stocks, it's mostly in Tesla, which I might have to sell some to get Pokemon card. But anyway, like that's I'm not just someone that is like saying like, oh yeah, fuck it, just you know, just do what makes you happy. And I'm like miserable, although sometimes <laughs> I am, but. No, for the most part, it's, I'm walking the walk. I'm doing it. I'm telling you, like, I'm, yeah, I'm working like 80 something hours a week. I don't have family. I don't have kids. I don't have, again, this is just for work. And there's a whole big reason why I'm doing this. And, you know, I've made other videos on that. If you want, ask me in the comments. I'll totally uh, go into it. But, yeah, I see a lot of people suffering. And I see a lot of people saying that, like, pretending to be happy or they're buying Rolexes, or buying these fancy cars and they are just miserable and they're doing it to just like keep up with the Joneses and like 
oh, maybe if I, you know, buy this, I'll be happy. Maybe if I do this, get this roll, I'll be happy. Similar to like when you're on a diet and you just want to eat a giant piece of cake. Yeah. You get that like five minutes of mouth pleasure. It's like, this is so fucking good. And what happens as soon as it's over? Regret. You feel like shit. Your stomach's upset. What happens when you buy a $30,000 car, $50,000 car? Yeah, it looks cool. He's like, yeah, this is so fucking awesome. And then like it goes away and it's not even like they're doing like one is going to lose value. If you get a Tesla, that's one thing because Tesla's for the most part retain their value extraordinarily well. Some even gain value because of the cost of full self-driving it keeps going up and up. You get it at this price, the cost goes up. Okay, now my car is worth even more. Great. And for Tesla, again, you're not hurting the planet with that, with, you know, the internal combustion engines with gas. So I get it. If you have that kind of a big, kind of a thing, I'm, I'm getting one, maybe two. But just the fact that some people do things to please other people and to try to impress other people and not themselves, like, that is why I'm such a big advocate for drugs like LSD and uh, mushrooms, because that will kill all of that ego shit right away. You won't give a fuck if what anyone else thinks of you. Like, no, I want to be happy. And I want other people to be happy. I, I do. I, I do. I love people. People sometimes suck and sometimes they're horrible and they cause mass destruction. But I think it was uh, Mr. Rogers um, clip where he says, like, you know, when he's feeling sad about stuff and his mom says, every disaster you see, everything that's really messed up in life, look for the helpers there's always people helping and I feel like drugs definitely help you again just in my experience acid mushrooms they show you how to help people like to they want you they show you how to be one of those people and i want to be one of those people i am one of those people i donate minimum ten thousand dollars a year to animal charities mostly best friends animal society i started a scholarship for my old high school and this is just the beginning Again, I'm still in my 20s. I still have a long way to go. I'm telling you guys this, if you've stayed with the video this long, because I want you to be happy. And I swear to God, I am so much happier working 80-something hours a week between both businesses, stock research, and making a fuck ton of money versus if I was, God, if I was still in school. And oh my God, I would have... I, I just wouldn't. That one semester of school, I was fucking miserable. Partly because I hate school, partly because the transition from the military was not that easy for me. For some, it might be easier, maybe because they're stronger than me. For some, it might not be because they may have had worse experiences. And going into this, I, you know, luckily I had a lot of friends. Still do. Thank God. I love them. I don't see them as much as I, I'd like to. Um, sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, that that's it. Um, I hope everyone's doing well. And... Please, for the love of God, do what makes you happy. Don't do anything for anyone else. Do what makes you happy. Because at, at the end of the day, you have to live with yourself. All those other people, some will leave, some will die, some you'll never talk to again. You, you have to live with yourself. And, and, and that's it. So anyway, guys, uh, I love you. I'll talk to you all later. All right? Bye.